What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Making Podcasts Great Again. I am your tech stuff guy, Jay Nog, and we are here, of course, with the President of the United States of America, Mr. Donald J. Trump. Mr. President, another crazy week in your life. How are you? Even by my, I would say, strong standards, sort of powerful standards, I think this has been one of the, you know, one of the toughest uh, toughest weeks we've had, but we're, we're doing strongly and things are good. So we're not too worried. We're not too worried. Not at all. Well, Mr. President, we have a special guest this week. Okay. And um, I don't know if you're a fan of the series on Showtime, the Comey rule. You must be familiar with Comey. Do you know, you, 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 does the name ring a bell? Sort of a, well, he was a showboat and sort of a nasty, a nasty failed FBI director, but no, I didn't see the series. I think I don't know how long it was, but I didn't see more than three and a half hours of it. So, okay. I don't, you know, I, well, it, I, think I, I, a, I was passing the channel and I think I might have caught three and a half hours, you know, by accident, basically. So you basically caught the, the whole thing, except for, I think, the credits at the end. No, that, well, you know, you see, I don't know how much I caught, but it was, I certainly didn't sit down and watch it. You know, you flip the channels and then I get it. And then, you yeah. see some, you know. That happens when Shawshank's on and I just go and then I got it. And then it's the end. Well, we have the writer and director of Comey Rule, Billy Ray. Mr. Ray, is Mr. Ray, Billy Ray? Billy, how would, how would you like to me to address you? Oh, Billy's fine. And thank Billy, you okay. Having- okay, Billy, this is uh, Mr. President. Mr. President. Sir, Mr. President, sir, you throw, you know, you got to do the sir. Sort of respect. So you, you want Billy to call you Mr. President, sir, every time he addresses you on the podcast? No, it, well, excuse me, excuse me. Okay, we're, now I'm talking to the filmmaker. We're not talking to the tech stuff guy. He can call me Mr. President. He can call me sir. He can call me Mr. President, sir. He can call me Mr. Trump. We, it's, we give, it's like our great health care. We give, it's all about choice. It's all about great choice. Well, Billy, welcome to the show. Thank you for joining us. We really appreciate you spending the time with us tonight. Um, Thank you. Mr. President, ha- uh, happy Yom Kippur. Uh, Billy, do you celebrate Yom Kippur? Well, one doesn't really celebrate Yom Right, Yom you atone, um, you atone. It's a day of atonement, so I, I'm fasting. I now uh, actually have an hour left to go uh, on a 24-hour fast before I can eat. Um, I, I, I don't know. I, I, uh, Don, are you, are you fasting? Uh, for, okay, well, you know, remember Simon says, I have to say Simon says, I don't respond to Don, but I will say, I don't, I don't know all the, I mean, you're obviously sort of a big Hollywood type, so I didn't know Yom Kippur is obviously maybe the new fad diet. Is that what it is? It's sort of, you do like a day of fat. That's, you know, they've talked about the fasting being a new diet thing. So it's called, they call it Yom Kippur. That's what the, the Hollywood well, types are doing. Uh, it's not a fad. I think it's been around about 5,700 years. And I, look, I, I oh, so it's like paleo. That. It's like the pa- you heard the paleo <laughs> diet. That's like the caveman. So that's it's an old diet as well. Okay, so Yom Kippur. It's the new diet fad in Hollywood. You know what I? I you know, I'm not gonna lie. I could use a couple pounds, Mr. President. You should it's, ask it's a uh, Ivanka. Uh, ask Ivanka or Jared. They they might be familiar with it, and and they might be atoning right now. You know what you do on Yom Kippur is. You, you take your fist and you, you, you lay out all the sins of the previous year, like for the sin I have sinned by lying, for the sin I have sinned by wishing ill on others, you know, et cetera. And then you ask God for forgiveness. I, I don't know if you've ever gone through a process like that. Well, you know, as, as you know, I'm a very sort of powerful Christian and I don't really think I need to ask for forgiveness. You know, what, Sorry that I made the economy the greatest economy in the history of the world. Please forgive me. <laughs> Mr. President, I don't, th- I don't think it's really like that. Yeah, I'm sure you have. Well, let's talk about some sins. Sorry, sorry that I'm the greatest thing to happen to Israel in the history of the Jewish people. <laughs> I apologize. Sorry, God. <laughs> so I guess you're, you're, so you're not celebrating with the Ivanka and Jared. No, they you know, these, I'm a little busy. Okay, I don't know if you know this, I'm the president. So no, they're doing their sort of uh, whatever, what, whatever it was called, paleo diet. Uh, <laughs> or, you know, they're doing, they're doing what they need to do. And that's, I respect it. I have strong respect for it. But and, I'm, I'm uh, very busy. And, We've got a Sleepy Joe debate tomorrow. So we're getting prepped. Any, any uh, atoning maybe for 
COVID for 205,000 deaths for not doing anything about that? Well, I've done a lot of things for it actually. And if I had done nothing, if I had taken a six month nap and nobody did anything, we'd have, this is what the scientists said, we would have 11 billion dead people if I had just done nothing. I stepped in, I banned China. I said to China, no, that stopped so much virus. And now we're working on therapeutics and vaccines. And I'm actually calling the first vaccine, vaccine waters, uh, just to tease, you know, the low IQ individual in Congress. So we're gonna call it vaccine waters and that'll be a beauty. Can you, um, I know we're here to talk about the Comey rule, but I'm just curious. Um, nope. Can you can you take me through the science of the vaccines, like your understanding of how the science works? No, of course. You know, I mean, we have a lot of things to talk about. I think there was a, you know, we had a sort of powerful agenda laid out for the show. But I can, you know, what happens is there's a virus. Okay, it starts, and you know, actually, they what they did was we had a meeting in the Situation Room, which is a very sort of serious room. I, I said they should rename it the serious room situation. You can have a good situation, but there's, it seems like we're never in there discussing good situations. It's always serious. So I said, we're going to call it the Trump serious room. But what I think we should do is they played the movie Contagion. Have you heard of this movie, Contagion? It's Contagion. They played this. Contagion. Contagion. Well, you can, you know, there's different, you know, Thailand, Thailand, there's different pronunciations. <laughs> But we did a very strong viewing of the movie because instead of charts and things, I think they did such a good job with that movie that sort of explained the science. A bat took a dump on a pig. <laughs> Gwyneth Paltrow doing her stupid, you know, she's a lifestyle, very, oh, I'm a lifestyle brand. She does her lifestyle brand, brings it over, gets Matt Damon sick, and the next thing you know, we've got to shut down China. So that's, I mean, that's... I'm making it a little simple. You know, they call it layman's terms. I'm putting it into sort of terms that everybody can understand, but it's, we're doing very powerfully, but it was a very helpful uh, film, a very helpful film in terms of uh, explaining. So I hope I didn't lose you there with all the science. You know, I sometimes get very I was able to keep up. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate that. Now, Mr. President, uh, the New York times revealed your, your income taxes this, this week. And 10 years of not paying taxes, I think you paid uh, $750 in 2016, 2017. Uh, the biggest thing here is that um, your hair, your hair costs $70,000 a year. And you paid $700,000 to Ivanka as a consultant, which I don't even know is legal. Would you like to explain all this, please? <laughs> Our tax code is totally, should be illegal, okay? They take money from people who create great jobs and do very strong things for the economy. But basically, it's called depreciation, okay? When you're a great builder and you buy properties like I do, the value, it depreciates. You know, it's, it's what happens with like a wife. The wife turns 40 and you start to have less appreciation for her. So that's called depreciation. <laughs> And sometimes that can depress you. You, you, say, you know, you're, you're trying to be a strong businessman. You remember, oh, my wife is now 42. Gross. I'm no longer doing as strong at business because I'm depressed about, you know, the model is not looking, looking like an old model. We want the new model. And so then you have depreciation and then you get divorced and, you know, you, you buy new businesses. You meet Transylvanian women who come over for green cards and, you know, there's, it's a very, there's a, there's sort of a, a cyclical nature to it. So we had many years of depreciation and, but at the same time, I'm worth $42 billion. So it's a, it's a very complicated sort of arrangement. It's probably too complicated for you. You know, we should be talking about other, other things. I think and Ivanka was a, a tremendous consultant. She deserved all that money. And so, I mean, I mean you guys, do. I don't know if you ever, you ever go, I mean, you're married now, tech stuff guy? Yes. Yeah, but when you're, when you're courting, you know, they call it courting. When you're trying to date a woman, you try to flash some cash. You show off. 
So like with Ivanka, I was like, look at me. I got a lot of cash. Doesn't that impress you? Why were you and courting your daughter? No, I didn't say I was courting my daughter. I was saying I was trying to impress her. Oh, okay. Well, can I ask you a question? Um, yes. Does it trouble you at all that in a year like 2016 or 2017, when you, you paid $750 in taxes, that's less taxes than a teacher would pay or a nurse or a waitress or, you know, a guy who installs your cable. In fact, it's less money than someone would pay in taxes if they were on unemployment. People in unemployment actually pay more in taxes than $750. So I wonder, do you think that makes them suckers? Uh, I wouldn't go as strong as to say suckers. I would say, you know, something nicer like losers. I think that, you know, that suckers is sort of the worst thing you can say, but I'd say they're a step up from suckers. No, and it's sad. It's a sad, believe me, I understand. There was a time in my life where I didn't have anything except $55 million from the great Fred Trump. Okay. I've been in some pretty dark places. Okay. Some pretty deep holes. <laughs> so I know what it's like to struggle, but now I'm sort of, you know, they, you ever heard the, the phrase to the, the, to the, the victor go the spoils. Yes. Well, I don't know who Victor is, but in our family, we have a saying that says, to Donald goes everything, fuck everybody else. It's sort of a more blunt phrase, but I think it's sort of a powerful phrase that we use. So, you know, I feel sorry for these people that they're not that talented, that they have to take sort of, you know, jobs that you might not want. But I think if they work hard and if they, you know, vote me in for another four to eight years, I think they'll see that everybody will get a lot richer with me in, in power. Mr. President, can you explain the $70,000 right off to take care of your hair? What are you doing to your hair? It doesn't look like you get a blowout every day or what is exactly happening? Although with your I can hair? tell you, Mike Pence certainly wishes he could do that for me. You see the way that guy looks at me? Unbelievable. It's like you're my vice president, not my mistress. Calm down. The, uh, well, it's, it's a very sort of powerful hairstyle. It's, I would think you would agree. It's sort of iconic. Nobody ever, remember Rachel? Remember the Rachel? Who, by the way, she once asked me out and I said no because she wasn't hot enough. But Jennifer Aniston. She okay. was at Brad Pitt and she asked me out. I think I might have broken up their marriage. But anyway, <laughs> that's not important now. What happened was everybody was like, oh, the Rachel, the Rachel, she had this haircut. Nobody ever asked how much it was. Everybody knew it was an expensive haircut because it was very stylish. I have an iconic haircut. I'm not on Friends, okay? I'm in the White House. That's sort of, I would say, a little bit bigger deal than being on a show. And, you know, it takes a lot. It's a brand. It's sort of an image. So, you know, we spend a lot of money uh, taking care of the presidential main. That's what we call it. Do you but see? It, it, I'm, I'm sorry, sorry, Billy. I had a follow-up question, Jay, if you don't mind. Go for it. Because uh, you never know. I mean, I, I, you know, uh, the Comey rule is is two nights, but I, I'd be happy to to write and direct a sequel, and and this may be part of it. Um, so in those tax uh, returns, it seems really clear that you're in debt somewhere around four hundred twenty million dollars to somebody. Uh, that's why you're you know, declaring all these uh, loss years. Who, who, who do you owe that money to? It's, you know, I promised certain people named Vlad that I wouldn't say. <laughs> so I'm not going to tell, I'm not going to share that. Okay, that's, you know, between me and powerful people uh, that we will work that out. But, you know, there's I'm the king of debt. Okay, they called me the king. Well, I called myself the king of debt, but I'm the king of debt. And I'm not afraid. Okay, I've dealt with very tough people. And that's the risks when you're a big time player like I am. You take certain risks, but we'll be fine. We'll be fine. And by my third term in office, like, we will have, you know, done a lot of deals. And it'll be, I think, very strong. I heard that the membership fee at Mar-a-Lago before you were president was $600,000 and now it's $6 million. Um, isn't that enough to cover your debt? 
well, you know, I still have to eat. Okay, I can't just pay debt. I've got, you know, properties. I've got women. I've got McDonald's. So there's, you can't just go, oh, here, I pay. You know, if you owe, if you owe money, you don't pay the whole thing. You, you if you have to eat, if you have to live, you have to do, you have to have life. It's called life. And you can't just pay off your debt the whole time. So, no, Mar and Mar-a-Lago, by the way, thank you for bringing it out. It's such a, such a strong club. It's doing so well. It's had such a, it's, I think it's a total coincidence, but it's done so well since I became president. <laughs> Mr. President, speaking of a very strong club, we have a strong sponsor this week, and that is betonline.ag. Every bet I make online, I go through betonline.ag. We got the Stanley Cup finals going on. You have basketball cha championship going on. Football's in full swing. Baseball playoffs coming. You got UFC, golf. There are so many things to bet on. You might not be at a game this year, but you can still be in on the action at BetOnline. BetOnline is going the extra mile to make sure you can get in on everything imaginable this season. From game spreads and totals to team, player, and coaching props, BetOnline gives you more options to wager than any place online. Mr. President, they even have wagers, political wagers, on you Will for Ivan president. What's the line on will Ivanka get divorced from Jared and finally risk it all? to be with a more mature, powerful man. I think it's an even line right now, Mr. President. So okay, it's well, we'll just see. 50, we might yes. want to bet that. I'm just telling our fans, you might want to, you might want to bet that one. I have a <laughs> good feeling about that one. Well, you can get in on their season opening bonuses today and start off wagering to win. Basically what you do, you get a, you get an online bonus when you wager with benonline.ag. With division is it, and championship is it, is it a futures. Do they give you four hundred and twenty million dollars? Is that the <laughs> is that the bonus? No, it might be seven hundred and fifty dollars, but I have not checked oh, yet, well, Mr. President. We'll see. We'll see. Head to bed online today and take advantage of all the great sign up bonuses. Bet online, your online sports book experts. That's betonline.ag. Mr. President. Hey, what's the line on the presidential election on Bet Online? And and are you planning on betting it, Don? Well, I think what I would do is, this is sort of the way I bet. I'll bet many millions of dollars on Sleepy Joe. And either way, I win. Either way, I win very strongly. <laughs> so, and if the, if the amount goes up high enough, maybe I, you know, I quit and collect. Who knows? Winnings could be up to $420 million. I, I, I picked that number randomly, but it could be... <laughs> You know, we could see that could be uh, betonline.ag, everybody. It's the AG. We call it the Bill Barr website for sports. You were a heavy favorite, Mr. President, but not such a heavy favorite. It's almost an even line. And this might have something well, to I'm do. I'm not with that heavy because I'm six foot five, 220 pounds. That's right. Slim, <laughs> built, rock solid. And speaking of rock solid, the rock, Mr. President. He is endorsing. Somehow I knew you were going to do that. <laughs> the Rock has endorsed Biden-Harris. The Rock has a lot of followers on social media. He's in touch with the youth. That should scare you a little bit. He's like, I think if he was running for president right now, he might be able to take out you and Biden. So. It's. And I think, you know, we have a Hollywood person here. So I think it's sad that you have talented people who, who se you know, seem to be solid people who get so brainwashed by the Hollywood left, you know, that The Rock, The Rock is a centrist. He's always been sort of a non-political good guy. And it's sad that he de decided after all this time to throw his, you know, weight. And by the way, he's not that, he's not that strong uh, behind... <laughs> Sleepy Joe Biden and, and Koala Bear Harris. Like, why would I don't I honestly don't understand why he would do that. But did you see him in his tight shirt? Did you see him in his women's small T-shirt? He looked his entire body looked like it was made up of D cup breasts, like silicone <laughs> cups everywhere. He was just he looked like an action like a like a I mean, believe me, I had to see the picture because Mike Pence wouldn't stop looking at it. But it's <laughs> You know, this is this is who we're looking for for endorsements. No, I don't. I don't need the Rock. I have Kid Rock. Okay, I don't need the Rock. I have Kid Rock, and Kid Rock is a much better patriot. And you've got Scott Baio. 
and don't and you, don't, you know Antonio Sabato Jr. Also, you probably I don't think you've worked with them. I don't think you've worked with that level of talent. <laughs> don't forget John Voigt. He's a strong conservative. Although he scares me a little. So he talks sometimes. I, you know, I have a high opinion of myself, but I think that guy prays to me at night. He's a little, you know, I love somebody who loves their president, but uh, even for me, John Voigt is a little much. <laughs> James Woods? Well, James Woods is actually sort of the front runner to replace the great Jeffrey Epstein in my inner circle. You know, because once the great Jeff Epstein, and I don't know if you're familiar, we, we, I don't like to bring him up on the podcast because it gets Never. me upset sometimes. Never. It gets me, you know, you, it's, the loss is still very raw because he was definitely not murdered by Attorney General Bill Barr in his cell. It was definitely a total suicide. And it still affects me. So James Woods is sort of, you know, you know, that guy who likes the sort of, uh, to to, you know, the, walk the line in terms of, uh, is it legal? Is it not legal? I, you know, he's sort of a risk taker that way. So we're very excited. We're going to see if he can join the cabinet next, next term. <laughs> well, Mr. President, our guest, Billy Ray, he wrote and directed. Achy Breaky Heart. We, we, <laughs> we all remember that song. No, that, that's, that's Billy that's Ray's song. Ray. That's Billy Ray Cyrus. That's Billy Ray Cyrus. This is just Billy well, Ray. Well, then who's that? No, excuse Who's this? When I was told, you told me we had Billy Ray Cyrus coming. I said, it's okay. even though he did the country song with the gay black, I said, you know, I can still, I still think he's going to be a strong guest. I, who's no, you, Billy Ray? You just mis, you misunderstood what I was saying. He's the writer and director of Comey Rule. It's on Showtime right now. You said you didn't see it, but then you said you didn't see any of the three hours and 43 minutes or whatever you. No, recorded. I only caught like three hours and 35 minutes of it. So there's, you know, I'm sure there's gaps that I totally made because I wasn't, you know, I wasn't very interested in seeing the James Comey story, you know, whatever it's called, the Comey rule. Now, Mr. President, since you didn't see any of it, you didn't see that Don Jr. had a little cameo in, in the series. Did you happen to see? No, I caught that part. That part I saw. I did see him. I saw, I, uh, you know, the first, the first part, it was a two-parter. Yes. And I'm watching the first part, and I see this tall, handsome, blonde guy walking around in a suit. And I go, well, finally, somebody's showing me respect. And then at the end, they, it was James, they were saying that was James Comey. I was like, no, that was me. The tall, handsome, blonde guy had to be me. That wasn't James Comey. And I'm watching it, and then they have this guy show up in the second episode. You know, so not a, you know, this guy looked like he was about six one, two hundred and eighty pounds. Okay, <laughs> not not six foot six, two ten, like I, you know, trim, sort of strong and fit. And I'm going, who? Is, they totally messed up the casting. The the other guy looked more like me. The James Comey character looked totally like Trump. So I was I was confused from the beginning, uh, but it was. Uh, I've seen worse. I've seen worse. I thought there was, uh, you know, there was some talent. There was some talent. I thought Peter and Lisa, can I ask the director? Can I ask the writer director a question? Of course. Of course. Now, Peter and Lisa, I think you know that I've basically done phone sex on at my rallies mm -hmm. in character as Peter and Lisa. Oh, Peter, Peter, Lisa, Lisa, we're going to get that son of a bitch, Peter. You, I think you've, it's one of my greatest hits. Uh, <laughs> Let me tell you something. The actor and the actress playing Lisa and Peter, quite the upgrade. Okay. These were good looking people. And yet, and this is why I think you should have failed as a director. No sex. No, if you're going to upgrade and get the hot Peter and the hot Lisa, well then let's get, we know what they were doing. Let's get, let's, you know, let's show some, let's get some Comey rules. NC-17 action. Are you saying what this, this was like PG-13? I was like, what's going on? I mean, if you're going to show these nasty people who, who hate me, let's at least, you know, if they're upgraded, if you give me the hot version, let's get the hot version. Are you, are you well, asking for penetration, right. Mr. Preston? Is that what you're asking for? Excuse me, I, I didn't say that. I didn't say that. Okay. Okay. What, if I, did, uh, what if I did some really steamy scenes, perhaps, with you and Stormy Daniels or you and Karen McDougal or, uh, you know, a whole host of others. I, c I could do that. 
okay, well, we'll see, you know, if, <laughs> I think we'll see what happens. I think I'd be willing to sort of do a cameo as myself for those, you know, as a, as a sort of great entertainer. I was in Home Alone 2, which, as you know, was one of the great films. So I have, I have great entertainment experience, so I could do that. You hosted The Apprentice. You have, you have some chops, Mr. President. Now, Mr. President, were you upset that there was no Ivanka? Well, I couldn't, he couldn't, you can't, there's one Ivanka. I don't think there's an actress alive who could play Ivanka. Peter, was that the case that you couldn't cast someone as beautiful as Ivanka, so you just didn't write her into the script? That is exactly the case. Well, now, okay, well, now, you know what? Now I like, now this is a sort of top, top Hollywood person we're talking to. That was a test. You passed the test. We wanted to see if you were sort of one of these, you know, fake, fake patriot libs who just likes to trap. But no, now, now I like what we're talking about. It was actually, I thought, a solid series. Now I can say that. Now that you're nice to me, I can tell you, I was very impressed. With the, you know, I only, like I said, I only saw three hours and 36 of the uh, three hours and 42 minutes. So I might've missed a lot, but uh, Showtime, it's on Showtime. I was, uh, I was actually really curious what you thought about the scenes where it was just you and Comey, because, you know, to, to, to fashion those scenes, all I had was Comey's uh, point of view. I mean, all I had was, he had memorialized all of his meetings with you you know, he had taken very, very serious notes, um, but that's all I had to go on. And so I'm wondering what your perception was of those scenes, like the loyalty dinner or the scene where, uh, where Comey told you about the Steele dossier or the scene where you asked uh, Comey to go easy on Mike Flynn. Um, I, I just wondered what you thought about that. Did you, do you feel like I got them right? Can we go off the record? Can we go off the podcast record? One second, Mr. Yeah. President. Okay, thank you. We're off. Because now this can't be used in court. Okay, that's sort of podcast I'm... law. Uh, <laughs> I thought it was very accurate. I thought the only problem was uh, lanky James Comey was just sort of weak. He was such a sad, weak person. About, Of course I asked him to make deals and to be tough. I, that's how I operate. Okay, that's how I operate. It's... I. But it was, it was, the sad thing was his response was so weak. That was the problem. No, of course, I asked him for loyalty because I think the attorney, you see Bill Barr? You know what our meetings would be like if you do a sequel? The, bar, the Barr rule? It's a two minute movie. He comes in with that hound dog face and he says, yes, boss. And then he goes and beats up protesters and <laughs> definitely doesn't murder Jeff Epstein on my orders. And it's a great sort of, it's a quick movie. You could go on Quibi. You heard of Quibi where they make the five second movies or something. The bar rule on Quibi coming this fall, five second show, the bar rule. So no, I think, I just think Comey was so weak. I thought that those, I think those were basically what happened. Let's go back on the, uh, on the, on we're, the we're, we're, we're back on, we're, we're back on the record. Just to answer your question. Cause we're not going to hear that part. Uh, I never asked him to do anything with General Flynn, who's a good guy, by the way. And I thought it was not totally truthful what happened in the movie, but I didn't think it was the biggest fake news I'd ever seen. But it was, I understand Hollywood. It was not terrible. It was a little bit much, but not terrible. And, and j just between us, why'd you fire him? Uh, I don't think you understand how the presidential podcast works. I get to call when we go off the podcast record. <laughs> oh, oh. Okay. No, you get one. You get one. One mess up. We allow that. We're very. It's called grace. We're very gracious. Uh, no, but I fired him because of the Hillary in the. You know, the Russia, Hillary, Flynn, sort of uh, many things, but I'd say it was the Hillary, Russia, Flynn, uh, loyalty, uh, charges, reports, issues, I think sort of a combo. And, uh, but it was, you know, he deserved to be fired. He was, a, he was a, a crooked cop. He was a crooked cop. Nobody liked him at the FBI. That I know, that I can tell you. 
Well, you know, that actually wound up not being true. You know, um, Sarah Huckabee Sanders said that in a press conference that, that no one liked him at the FBI. And then later when she was under oath, she had to admit to uh, the Mueller investigation that that wasn't true at all, that she had completely made that up. Are you and calling? Actually, I don't, excuse, excuse me, excuse me, okay? <laughs> excuse me. I don't know if you're familiar with this show, but you need to be very careful when you invoke the name of the great Sarah Huckabee Sanders. My most loyal, you think Bill Barr is a loyal soldier? Sarah Huckabee Sanders would destroy Bill Barr in a loyalty test, okay? Mm -hmm. She did not lie. She told the truth. I won't hear anything other than that. We call it Big Huck on the podcast, and I won't have any Huck slander. Okay? <laughs> Mr. President, I have a question for you. In, in the series, you were described many times as spiteful. Would you describe yourself as, as a spiteful person, Mr. President? No, no, not at all. In fact, um, before the podcast, I actually told our IRS to hold off on auditing Billy Ray. <laughs> Yesterday, I, I was very mad and I said, audit him, tap his phones, make sure, take away his health insurance, see if we can cancel SAG's health insurance or whatever he's a member of, the, the WAG, I don't know, the Writers Guild. The Writers Guild of America. The WIGA. The way, okay, the way, well, you know, and uh, that was close. That was close to offensive. And, and then before the show, I said, you know what? Let's put a pause. Bill Barr, pause that. Don't investigate him yet. We'll see if he's a nice guy. So I thought that was very, that's the opposite of spite. That's called generous. I, I, uh, I, I agree. Did, I will say, though, I, uh, I liked how Mueller looked like a total asshole. And I think you'd agree. Bob Mueller looks like a total asshole in this. He's in it for like five minutes and it's like, what a jerk. <laughs> Even Comey seemed to be like, why is this guy such a jerk? So Comey and I actually find common ground. Bob Mueller, total asshole. Well, you know what that's about for me? The, the movie is about how heartbreaking it can be to be a public servant. And, you know, Jim Comey embodies that for me. A lot of people in the FBI do. And it seemed to me that, that Bob Mueller was absolutely a public servant who was just sort of burnt out. He, he had just been doing the job for too long. And, uh, and I think he was out of gas. And I think you, you may have benefited from that when he investigated you because uh, he investigated you like a, like a tired person would. Like a dog, like I like to say, like a, like a tired dog. He looked like, remember, he looked like an athlete that should have retired five years ago, like Willie Mays playing for the Mets. Okay, he was terrible. But he was a real jerk in this one, so I like that. And I, what I found interesting was Andrew McCabe, okay, who's, of course, a very nasty person. He's in the series a lot. Great guy. Totally, guy. total failure, total Democrat. And no, lifelong Republican, sir. Well, but he, well, that's what he says. That's what he says. Okay. But I thought it was interesting because you don't wait, know wait. this, but during, during excuse like, me, like during, you excuse were a me. lifelong Democrat. I'm sorry. Who? You, weren't you a Democrat? No, that's fake news. I, uh, <laughs> what I can tell you is that Andrew McCabe, I learned from your series. I'm watching it and I knew the guy was bad news, but then I watched your series and saw it very closely. This guy, Andrew McCabe, murdered a bunch of people on House of Cards. Because <laughs> you don't know this, but during the government shutdown, I was very famous, as I shared on the podcast. I, I finished Netflix. I watched all of ne Now there's new shows on, but I finished Netflix during the, the government <laughs> shutdown. And House of Cards, I watched very powerfully. Andrew McCabe murdered a bunch of people on House of Cards. No, no, and that's another character played by the same actor. Okay, well, no, see, now I, I thought you'd say that. And yet, you know who I saw in your, in your little movie on Showtime? Don Lemon. Don Lemon was in the movie. That wasn't an actor playing Don Lemon. That was Don <laughs> Lemon. So now you're telling, okay, so you're telling me Don Lemon was the real Don Lemon, but the Andrew McCabe was played by an actor. Okay, yes, so they're now. Because Andrew McCabe is in scenes and Don Lemon is, is behind a TV screen 
we, we showed a piece of a Don Lemon broadcast. You know, we did that. There, there are other uh, news reporters. Who a lot appeared. of CNN, by the way, a lot of CNN. I wasn't too happy about that. And you call them the Clinton News Network in our, in our show. Yes. So that's, but that's my point. See, and this is why nobody trusts the Dems and nobody trusts Hollywood. But we also have expect Fox News. Fox News appears in our movie. Rudy Giuliani was on Fox News uh, at the end of uh, night one. And that was a good night. We liked that. <laughs> but I think it's very interesting and interesting that you have a... So, so now my great supporters are supposed to believe that, oh, no, when it's not good, it's, you know, it's an actor. And when it's good, it's the real person. I don't know. It sounds like a, a total hoax. I think the Comey rule is a total hoax. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. President, I have a question for you. Um, who do you think was the, the hottest FBI employee? In real life or in the movie? Well, in the movie. Oh, it was Lisa. Come on, Lisa. <laughs> you still got a thing for Lisa. I know I don't, not the real, the Lisa that they had in this, in the movie. Right, was, Lisa, Lisa was, actress, not strong. Lisa real. And life. I think she was murdered in Game of Thrones. So it was good to see her come back. She's <laughs> tough. Lisa's tough. She got murdered at her wedding in Game of Thrones. And then she comes back. I guess, you know, to, she was very motivated to hurt the president. So um, she came that's, back uh, from the dead. That's Una Chaplin is her name. Charlie Chaplin's granddaughter. Correct. Eugene O'Neill's great granddaughter, I believe. When I see something I like, I do strong Wikipedia. <laughs> okay, I do very strong Wikipedia. <laughs> Mr. President, I was confused because during this podcast, you talk very fondly of prostitutes. And then in this film, you denied in many scenes Russian prostitutes. Where listening to this podcast, you talk very highly of Russian prostitutes. You know what I was one, very confused. Me, you know what I thought the show did very well that nobody gives me credit for? Nobody ever gives me credit. I was very concerned with my wife mesothelioma's feelings. <laughs> I was very concerned with her feelings. I didn't want her to be offended and, and insulted and hear lies, nasty lies. And everybody always acts like I'm some bad guy. I showed great caring in this movie. I showed tremendous and powerful caring. Okay, it was some of the strongest caring I think you've ever seen. So I did think that was good. I liked, I liked seeing that because it showed, you know, that I, you know, that my Lanta means something to me, that we have a strong, a strong bond that you can only have with your, you know, third trophy wife. It's a, it's a special level of love. So you, you, you feel, I'm sorry to interrupt, Jay. Didn't you feel that, um, that Jim Comey loved his family too? But in a weak way. You see him cry? <laughs> Did you see him cry at the end of the, he cried. He cried, F, big tough Jim Comey, big tall FBI man, crying. Crying, I think, more than his wife. What kind of, you can't have a guy leading the FBI who's standing there like a giant tree you know what we call him? We call him the weeping willow. That's what we're going to call him because he's a big, tall tree that's crying. Weeping willow Comey. That's his new nickname if he ever gets a job again. Uh. <laughs> Mr. President, so you're happy the way, was it accurate the way you, you care for your wife shown in the film? Is, it, is that accurate Who, to real life? Whose wife? Your your wife is that is that accurate the way the film showed it because it is it factual how you care for your wife like that was that what you concerned about with the prostitutes? Which wife are we talking about? <laughs> Melania, the wife that you are married to right now. Oh, her. No, yes. we, it's uh, it's you know it's great respect. We have great respect, <laughs> and she's you know a great a great first lady, a great. Third first lady. That's what we call her, the third first lady. <laughs> but I, I want to know, are there any, what else? Is this your first, is this your first film? What, what is yeah. this? What, what else have you done? Mr. President, he has a, has a huge resume. Did, I know you're, you're a fan of these movies. Because well, I think he about did, them I don't before. think it was, wait, I don't think it was a terror. I'm not saying, I want to be nice. I thought it was like, well done for, you know, I think he's working with a lot of libs in Hollywood, so he can't give the full truth. Because if he was doing the full truth story, we would have had John Voigt 
as me. We would have had Vince Vaughn as as Jared Kushner. Gary Sinise would have maybe played Rance Priebus. Uh, James Woods would have had to have been in there maybe as Anthony Weiner or something. Who would Candace yeah, Owens play? Who's who? Chuck Woolery. Well, Chuck, you know, one of our great Hollywood people, you know. Can I tell you something about Ryan's Priebus? It's interesting. When we were on the, uh, when we were on the set and I was talking to, uh, to uh, T.R. Knight, who plays Ryan's Priebus, and I was talking to Brendan Gleeson, who plays you, and sort of the watchword for all of their scenes was, I, I would just say to, I'd say to Brendan, look, in the White House, every day is shit on Reince Priebus Day. And that's how he played it. And, and I know that's how you feel about Reince. Well, he's a little, you know, I took him on because the RNC, they wanted their own little mouse to keep their eye on me. But, you know, I told him to get, I told him to get the hell out of there. Fired him. I think I fired him by tweet. I love firing people by tweet. Mr. President. I think I think you did for somebody who's sort of stuck in the Hollywood elite. I think you actually did a fair, as fair a job as you could do. Okay, I think we would have gotten much, you know if Dinesh D'Souza had done the Comey rule, I think we would have had a much higher quality, honest film. You know they call Dinesh D'Souza the 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 Orson Welles of zero percent on Rotten Tomatoes. That's what they call him. He's a he's a legendary filmmaker. But, uh, but I think you did, you know, you're sort of handicapped by being surrounded by the Hollywood elites. But if it you was your first film, the, uh, I think that's a very strong effort. It's not his first film, Mr. President. He's been a part of films that you enjoy. You enjoy the Hunger Games, right? Well, you know, especially after I leaked Jennifer Lawrence's photos on the internet. <laughs> you was, were the one uh, who leaked them? Take, edit that. Edit that I'm in gonna, post yeah, or whatever you do with the tech. Uh, no, The Hunger Games was great. The Hunger Games was like what we're working towards. That's like the end game for a Trump, like three, three to four terms of a Trump administration. We're hoping that hot blondes murdering people in the woods while the rich watch. That is literally, I don't call it The Hunger Games. You should have called the, the, the movie Heaven, but it was, that was an excellent film. Oh, I didn't. Okay. So you did. Okay. So, you know, a broken clock is right twice a day. So you did Hunger Games. That's Another well, film that you've talked about? I, did. I, was, I was one of the writers right. who contributed to it. A part of it, did yes. Did you uh, ever see Captain Phillips? Well, Captain Phillips is one of my, probably my most favorite film ever made. Well, I wrote that. Ask. I, I got nominated for an Oscar for that. You got nominated? You wrote Captain Phillips? I did. Okay. Then how did you get stuck with the Comey rule? How did you get <laughs> sucked into the sort of liberal Hollywood nastiness? Captain Phillips is the, I would argue, the greatest film of the last decade. Okay, you have Tom Hanks, tremendous Tom Hanks. Everybody loves Tom Hanks. Unlike The Rock, who's weak, you don't see Tom Hanks doing Instagram talking about endorsements because he's too busy being a great American. The Squad kidnaps Tom Hanks. Ilhan Omar kidnaps Tom Hanks. The squad, the squad from Somalia, they kidnapped Tom Hanks. And uh, who I'm saves? Uh, wait, wait, no, no. And who I'm saves the day? Fine. They were, Som they were Somalian, right? They were Somali? Yeah, but, but they were. Right, men. So, excuse me. I'm, I'm they excuse were men. Me, you gotta, excuse me. Take a, you got to take the compliment. So the squad, you know, AOC and Ilhan Omar <laughs> kidnap either. Tom Hanks, our great American. And who saves the day? Our great armed forces, our great military, and they save Tom Hanks, and it's a beautiful thing. It's, it's, that movie was so well done and so tense, and the ending is so great, and it just uh, tells you that Tom Hanks and our military will always defeat Ilhan Omar, and I thought, I, you know what? I changed my, you, that is a, I, you have, I'm going to give you, I think I'm going to give you one of the presidential medal. you know, the, remember the award that the great Rush Limbaugh won? I think you're almost to that level. I think you're almost I, worthy I, well, of the I, same I, I, award first, that Rush Limbaugh uh, got. I, I would turn that award down because I don't want to share an award with Rush Limbaugh. But secondly, well, no, you wouldn't share uh, his. He has his his own. You would get no, your, no, you would get I your copy. That. I understand that. But there were no women. There were no women Somali pirates. They, they were men, and 
and it wasn't Ilhan Omar. Well, when they're so malnourished, can you really tell at that point when they haven't eaten and so uh, they, they sort of just become very skinny, weak people? And, and also, they, they, you, know. Uh, you know, it's lovely that you say such nice things about the SEAL team that saved him, but I, I'm wondering why you, at the same time, would call people in the military losers and suckers uh, because, because you were able to avoid the military. That doesn't seem to square with what you're saying about the military. And, and I wonder if, if that has something to do with why so much of the military has turned against you at this point. No, I think, well, I think you, you as a, somebody, I think I would call you a talented writer at this point. You know, I think you've proven yourself now. That <laughs> I think the troops that you wrote about were better troops. They were like, they were like super troops. And, we, you know, we have good troops too, but I think the, I like the ones in your movies the best, okay? I want a movie where we have the SEAL team from Captain Phillips go, at, go against Jennifer Lawrence in The Hunger Games. Let's get that going. <laughs> I, think, I think I just wrote your next hit movie. Mr. President, we have, we have two more pieces of news. Um, I know I, I want to let uh, uh, We're just Billy. What about the other um, movies? I want to talk about the other movies. I understand, but Billy is okay. going to be breaking well, fast, so um, I, I want to let him get to the Jewish holiday. <laughs> no, I mean you're you're in charge, Mr. President. I just thought. No, I think we discussed this. It's sort of a new diet. It's like a Hollywood <laughs> diet, but I, that's okay. That's okay. I don't. You know, he's been, he's been you, very nice. He's yeah. he is one of the few Hollywood elites, the libs, that I think I actually think is not so bad. I'm going to tell everybody, by the way, this should help your film. I'm going to say, I'm going to tweet out your president's favorite writer director is Billy Ray. I think that'll do so many good things for you in Hollywood. <laughs> I think it's going to do a lot of things for him. I don't know how good they, but they'll do some things. Mr. President, you, you chose um, your nominee, Amy Coney Barrett. Um, Billy, what do you think about uh, the president's choice? Who would play her in a movie? I've got Amy, uh, Amy Adams. I was going to go with Nicole Kidman. Oh, and that's okay. That's, you know what? Well, they can both audition, but Nicole Kidman is actually <laughs> a very good choice as well. Of course, she's not from America, and I think it's insulting that you, you know, you're part of the reason probably why we have all these Australians taking strong American jobs in Hollywood. <laughs> Amy Coney Barrett is going to be a tremendous Supreme Court justice. She believes in Antonin Scalia. I think that's her judicial philosophy. Whatever Scalia would have done, she's going to do it, but do it prettier. <laughs> Mr. President, I don't know much about her, but I did read that she's so religious that she's been in those ceremonies where you talk in tongues. And you, well, in That's... the 80s, I went to a lot of parties where they used their tongues, and they were a lot of fun, I can tell you that. <laughs> uh, but that, I don't think it's the same kind of party we're talking about. Uh, it's a very extreme, crazy, religious kind of stuff. You think that's fine for the Supreme Court? Well, we'll see. We'll see what happens. I think, it, you know, we're going to try, and we're actually pitching a reality show about the Supreme Court, so I think... You get Clarence Thomas, Brett Kavanaugh, and a cute chick that talks in tongues in the same room. I think you've got a hit show for Netflix, okay? Obama's got a Netflix deal. Where's my Netflix deal? Trump Supreme Court. That's the best. It's going to be the best show. Hey, I, I had a seen. question about that. Um, a lot of people out here think that your end game uh, after November 3rd, because I, I, I think a lot of people out here are pretty convinced you're not going to be reelected, but the, the thought out here is that you're going to take over OAN and just turn it into, into Trump TV. And you'll wind up making, you know, billions of dollars, a lot more than Rush Limbaugh ever made. Uh, is, is that the plan for you? That is pretty much exactly the plan. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have... Because what I love about OAN is it takes it's it's all of it's recorded in some kid's basement. It's the most low budget thing you've ever seen. The average age of the on air talent is like fourteen, <laughs> so it's going to be a tremendous. It's going to be the easiest takeover ever. All of their anchors 
are already competing to sleep with me. You see them in the press conference. They, they, I mean, basically, I think OAN recruits, you know, Polynesian runaways from Port Authority in New York, and that's their talent. You know, it used to be, you know, if you saw The Deuce on HBO, it used to be they'd go into other things if you found runaways in Times Square. Now they put them on OAN. So it's, it's a beautiful thing, and I think we have a great takeover, and it's going to be uh, the Trump America News Network, TAN. Mm. But there, there is a, quite a bit of research indicating that OAN uh, gets its news from Russia. Uh, well, there's a lot of smart, exactly. there's a lot of talented people in Russia. A lot of smart people in Russia. Mm. And that doesn't trouble you at all? Well, that's, why should we, if they have great news, we should use all the news. You know, I'm, I'm thinking we're going to arrange, there's going to be Russian, pro, we're going to have Russian news. We're going to get great North Korea news. We're going to have a lot of, it's called a lot of perspectives. We want to have great perspectives from all over the globe, not just MSDNC, which I'm sure you like. Now, Mr. President, um, you have the debate tomorrow night. How are you preparing for this debate? I have been going to local nursing homes and pushing <laughs> people downstairs. So that is basically my prep for sleepy Joe Biden. It's not going to be pretty tomorrow night. That I can tell you. So that's all I'll you're doing. Hillary, I'll give Hillary credit. You know, yeah. she was a terrible candidate, but she didn't get, she didn't get rattled. Okay. I said nasty things to her and she just put that plastic smile and nothing happened. I think Sleepy Joe, I'm going to get to him and I'm going to get to him quick. I'm going to interrupt him every time he talks and you're going to see him get flustered and his hair plugs are going to start coming out and it's not going to be pretty. And people are going to realize they can't have a Sleepy Joe in the White House. Well, Mr. President, after tomorrow night's debate at 1030, you are going to go uh, on a live podcast for our Patreon Patriots Perfect 10 level at 1030 p.m. for a debate recap and a Q&A. So that is very exciting. So you must not think that you're going to even have a battle there, that you're going to do double duty with the show after the debate. I will have a towel on my shoulder, wiping my brow from the light sweat because I won't even have to exert a lot of energy. And I'll be eating a Happy Meal from McDonald's. And that's how we'll end the, the debate prep. Billy, what do you think? What do you look as, as a sort of top tier writer director? I think I can call you that now. <laughs> Hunger Games and Captain Phillips. And, the, and you could have done a lot worse with the Comey rule. I think in, <laughs> you know, some of these liberal, if Spike Lee had directed it, okay, it would have been, a, I think, a total disaster. But I think you, you were respectful, which is something I don't say a lot about, you know, horrible libs like you. So I think that, uh, what do you think as a filmmaker, what do you think is going to happen during this? What are you looking for in terms of entertainment? Because I want to, what would you like to see? And maybe I can deliver that. Well, you mean in the debate? Right. Okay. So... Uh, listen, Don, um, in, in my business, like in Sorry, your business, can't hear you. Can't hear you. <laughs> I'm my sorry. I, I, I have too much respect for the office of president to call you uh, Mr. President. I can't do it. And, um, and that's not even correct. Well, uh, tech stuff. If you could just say before he starts speaking, Mr. President, sir. I'm going to dub it in in post. We'll count that as him saying it. Okay. Okay. So anyway, in, in my business, like in your business, if you're explaining, you're losing. So I think what's going to happen is- that what, is that, what does that mean? What it means is you don't want to be playing defense. And you're I losing. Ah, ah, gotcha. You're explaining. So now you've lost. <laughs> Point for you, 45. But what I, what I think is coming is- Joe Biden is going to make you answer questions about the taxes and uh, Ivanka, and he's going to make you answer questions about COVID and the bounties on the heads of U.S. soldiers and uh, rollbacks on environmental regulations. Can I make some predictions so on things I will say? And I, and I think he's going to make you explain about the huck. 
So I, 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 my guess is you're going to be on about the who? Head. What was that last one? The Huck, Sarah Huckabee Sanders, isn't that? Oh, what Sarah. Called? Well, he better not. He better not go there. I can tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> here's what, what when here's I'm going to show you I'm going to give you because you've been such a nice guest Thank you. and the tech stuff guy finally hasn't screwed this episode up I'm going to tell you right now when they bring up taxes I'm going to pretend like they said Texas so I'm going to do like a two minute talk on Texas and then we're on to the next thing when he brings up Ivanka I'll give you the line of the night I'll go well I can tell you what I wouldn't allow Hunter Biden anywhere near Ivanka and then it's a free for all. Then it's then no issues. It's kid against kid, and the whole debate will be off, and I will win. So look for that. Those are my little predictions for the strong podcast people and our great guest. Hey, um, would you be interested at all in in me doing a rewrite on maybe your opening or your closing? Well, that would be. That's actually a good idea. I, what would you rather do, the opening or the closing? Uh, I'd rather do both, to be honest with you. I mean, I, I rewrite for a living. That's, that's part of what I do. So you let me know if you're stumbling at all. I mean, I, I, can, I can do a polish for you. Well, okay. Well, now we can tweet out that not only am I favorite writer-director in Hollywood, but now you're actively helping the Trump campaign. So <laughs> good luck. Good, you're going to have a, a great job in Dinesh D'Souza Studios soon. <laughs> Billy Ray, thank you so much for coming on and, and being our guest. This, this is so awesome. And everyone out there, please watch The Comey Rule. It is awesome. It's on Showtime. It's a two-part movie. Uh, it, it was fabulous. It was really awesome. Even the president watched it. So it is a great movie. Check that out. Also, Showtime check on it. demand. I'm sure it's got listings, yes. but it's on demand. Uh, so... Oh, yes. I, I usually don't break character so quickly, but thank you very much, uh, <laughs> Billy, for doing this. This was a lot of fun. And it, so it was awesome. really, it was great. <laughs> it, it was, it was, it was, but I'm, we, we, we don't make a lot of recommendations on this show because it's just a narcissistic uh, drama comedy. <laughs> but uh, it is for all our fans who are probably political junkies of some, some degree. Uh, it's awesome. And what yeah. I will say is, my mom is like Hillary ride or die. And she hated James Comey for years, but she, I don't know if she's watched it yet, but she read the book and it actually sort of changed her mind about Comey. Wow. But I'm saying, I think the movie conveys that very well as well. Like in terms of me going, Oh, it's a very sort of whole approach and shows sort of dilemmas that he deals with. And I think knowing that my mom loved the book's, sort of for that reason, but I didn't read the book, but I'm saying I feel like the movie clearly conveyed that, that balance. Uh, so well done and incredible to have you on because until you tweeted at me, I was just like, oh, this guy, uh, this blue check mark guy liked my stuff, cool. And I looked at your IMDB and I was like, holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> Literally, I was like, oh my God, I have like four of this guy's movies. This is nuts. <laughs> oh my God, well, thank you. I, you are a genius. I, I, I mean, li literally, this was just an hour of me laughing. I hope I didn't ruin it. <laughs> no, you were it was awesome. great. It was, you were fantastic. It was great. When is the podcast up? Like, when can I, when can I tweet well, it out? I think, it? Jay, if, if uh, I know we're still recording, but I think what we should do only because we have the debate recap tomorrow. Just throw it Maybe up this tonight week for we everything. Just throw it up tonight so that the debate, you know, so that people aren't having stuff bunched up in the wrong order. Okay, then you gotta, um, so, you gotta email me yes. and at me and I will- Yeah, yeah, tomorrow, will, tomorrow morning. Yeah, um, we'll send you everything for we'll sure. get all that. Okay, and, um, genius. Yes, and uh, everyone, please check out Comey Rule, Billy Ray, you were awesome. Such, a, such a great film. And, uh, and thanks again for, uh, for coming on the show. It's on Showtime, everyone. Check it out. Also, um, tomorrow night, we are doing uh, Patreon Patriot for Perfect 10 debate recap. Patreon.com slash MPGA. Check out the new website, MPGAPod.com. We got t-shirts, YouTube page, all our episodes. And everyone out there, uh, I'm taping a special on Saturday night at the Bel Air Diner, outdoors in a parking lot next to a dumpster. I'm an idiot, but please, I need a crowd. So come check it out. All the Mapigas out there. We know you're in Astoria, so come check it out. Bel Air Diner, 8 o'clock, belairdiner.myc. And again, everyone, 
check out Comey Rule on Showtime. It's on demand. Um, Billy, thanks again so much. We really appreciate this. Thank you. This was, this was so much fun. May, may God forgive me for doing it on Yom Kippur. But thank you so <laughs> and, much. And if I may, just one, my, my sign off. Uh, I will be doing on Trump the Internet, youtube.com slash Trump the Internet, in character, a, Q, a live Q&A before the debate. So youtube.com slash Trump the Internet. Uh, just subscribe there. You can join. It'll be an hour long live Q&A with me. Then the debate then our Q&A podcast for everybody who's a Perfect 10 member. But another thing, October 7th, I will do as Mike Pence, a pre-VP debate Q&A as Mike okay. Pence. Did so you do Pence? I do, I'm, I, right now it'd be a little tough, but I am, I'll show you a video that I just made that's coming out this week, which is the Trump Kings of Comedy, which is me as Trump, Pence, Bill Barr, Mitch McConnell, and Don Jr. doing like a Netflix stand-up special. <laughs> it's, I watched it today. It's just two and a half minutes, but it is, I'm very proud of that. So I'm getting all this political comedy out of my system. So hopefully things turn normal in January. So uh, thank you so much again, everybody. Check thank out the you. Comey Rule. Uh, subscribe to this podcast. Sh especially share this episode with friends. And uh, God help us all. Thank you.